Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Committee of the Whole meeting for May 30th. Um, we have 14 items on our agenda today. Um, item 13 is uh, an update. Um, I've been asked to pull for individual discussion items 5, 9, 10, 11, and 14. Um, what that means is that those items will be uh, dealt with individually and uh, discussed one at a time. If there is an item other than that that you're here about and you would like pulled for individual discussion, um, could you please signal to me now and let me know which item that is and uh, then we will see that it's pulled for discussion uh, on its own. Okay, I see none, so uh, council is there President, I would make a motion to approve the remaining items. Second. Okay, moved and seconded for consent on the remaining items. So the motion is we're gonna pass items one through four, six through eight, and 12 uh, based on staff recommendations. Informational too. Oh, 12's informational too, okay, I'm sorry. So. Um, 12 and 13 are updates or informational. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Podrigula? Yes. All right, we're on to item five. Uh, that is the uh, lease for Rainbow, Rainbow Gardens, their motion. So moved. So moved. Moved Second. by Sitma, seconded by Wolski. Sure. Um, Good. Discussion. Alderman Wolski. President Janser, I was maybe hoping uh, tangently related to this item. Uh, previously, we had recommended that the, the staff explore the building of a fence related to our uh, nuisance animal control recommendations. I was wondering if perhaps Mr. Lakefield could provide a brief update on where that's at. Okay, that that's that's actually not the item that we're discussing. I mean, I guess if, if you want an update on that, we could, we could check with them. Uh, we're talking about the lease for the gardens themselves. It is, but we, you know, we have previously talked, uh, I would say about uh, perhaps considering a fence uh, around that same property as, the, as was requested by those property owners. I, I, I guess that, um, that, that was my reason for, for bringing this forward for discussion. Okay. Um, is there is there an update from staff on that or <clears throat> President Janser Alderman Walski um, currently there is some fence on three sides of that uh, the Rainbow Gardens area already it's just the north side that there isn't fence but it's only uh, on the east side, it'd only be a four foot chain link fence. On the south, uh, it's a four or five foot chain link. On the west side, there's some taller fence that the softball complex auditorium and rec put up on that. But uh, we haven't, I guess, that I know of, we haven't been given any direction to look at anything other than what's there. And we don't have any identified funding source for putting anything up. Alderman Wolski. If I may add a, uh, just a comment here. I, I do think when we passed the, the nuisance animal recommendations back in January, 
one of the requests was that we explore use of community facilities for adding eight eight foot exclusion fencing around that property uh, it w it, at that time I believe it was going to take uh, a look to see what was going to be available uh, inside the community facilities funds based on uh, perhaps usage in 2017 and 2018 uh, and and I have had requests from the folks uh, in Rainbow Gardens uh, continuing to come so I, I did want to just bring the issue forward uh, at some point I would like to be able to provide an update to those folks on on how we're we're doing in terms of making progress on exploring that option okay it, it sounds like there's you know some clarification that maybe needs to happen about what the direction is on that and I guess I would ask uh, the uh, staff to take take a look back and see what was included in the uh, in, in that piece uh, on the uh, animals uh, ordinance and then uh, maybe you can bring that back to us next next month or let all let Alderman Walski know what you know what's found there certainly will okay appreciate it thanks okay back to discussion of a lease with Rainbow Gardens um, any discussion beyond this on the motion seeing no, nothing further uh, call the roll Sitma yes Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padragula? Yes. All right. Um, now we go to item number nine, which is a uh, retail liquor license transfer uh, for the poor farms. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Sipma. Second. Seconded by Straight. Um, discussion? Alderman Wolski. President Janser, I, I was hoping maybe we could get an explanation from, from staff. I was a bit confused by the language of this memo in terms of uh, it kind of seemed like there was maybe a, a three-way transfer taking place here. Uh, and so I think it was. OK. I, I think poor farm. Yep. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was a two ticket. No. Oh, my OK. So uh, yeah, I, I, was, I Finance director. more information here. All right, I haven't been directly involved with this, but uh, this is um, a liquor license that's owned by the folks that own the building as well. It's currently leased um, to another party. Uh, the terms of that lease are being changed. It uh, will be leased here shortly to another party. So it, it's just uh, there's three different parties involved. And ultimately, uh, the same people will still own the building and the liquor license. They'll just have a new tenant. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, any further discussion? Questions? Okay. I guess we're ready to vote. Uh, please call the <coughs> roll. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Uh, I, next item is item number 10, uh, the outdoor dining permit for the tap room. Um, is there a motion? Move approval. Moved by Olson. Second. Seconded by uh, Barney. Discussion. Alderman Wolski. President Johnson, I think I, I would request staff comment on this in terms of uh, the, there's a very detailed memo here with new information this morning. I, I think I'd like just to to get a sense of where we're at with this process, are we, you know, uh, so Mr. Lang, whatever you can provide. Uh, thank Lang. you, President Janser, uh, Alderman Wolski. Uh, as you know, this is kind of a new concept, at least in this in this format. Council approved the ordinance in February 2017, and there were no applicants last summer, but there's two uh, before you today. Uh, the first one is the tap room. And um, I, these applications kind of came in at the last minute and I had to get the memos out w working with the city clerk so that they could make it on the agenda today. And then subsequently, Mr. Barry and I met and discussed some of the issues and decided we should do some amend uh, should offer some amendments to the original um, memo and those are represented, I think, in, in yellow highlighting. And so I'll run through those and then if you have questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, first of all, the, the ordinance allows the council to issue an encroachment permit uh, that would be more than 42 inches for, a period, for up to a three year period. Less than 42 inches can be actually issued by the planning director. Uh, the, the tap rooms asked for 
a larger area than 42 inches. But as Mr. Barry and I discussed this, since this is a new program and we're just implementing it, I think the staff recommendation would be that we think it'd be wise to look at this as kind of a trial run and not issue the permit for any more than the first season. So we can kind of evaluate how it's working and if there's any adjustments that need to be made. And then perhaps in the future, multi-year time periods could be approved by the council. So that's the, the first thing. <clears throat> Second of all, um, since we haven't issued any of these or, or at this time, there's a question of what do we give to the person that authorizes, is it a piece of paper that says permit or what? And so we decided that much in the similar way that other types of encroachment agreements are, are now handled, that we would do a similar encroachment agreement between the city and the applicant. And that agreement, once it's executed, would serve as the permission to for that encroachment. And I, I did work some on kind of a draft uh, agreement uh, some today and working with legal department and and uh, staff we will hammer that out and, and get it get it ready the, the next thing is um, that uh, the city council may consider charging a fee for the privilege of occupying the public right-of-way because they're using it for the purposes of generating a profit I don't know if that'd be a fixed fee or if it would be a percentage of profit or something like that but that would be something that you could consider uh, moving forward. And then the, the other thing with the tap room application is, as you've seen the diagrams, the proposal is to have the enclosure, uh, the barrier for the outdoor dining area actually shifted away from the building kind of out into the sidewalk and leave the pedestrian alley between the enclosure and the building. And that uh, caused some concern because servers and waitresses and whatnot will have to be crossing through that public um, portion of the sidewalk and with, to serve drinks and things. So our recommendation is to move the barrier back to the building so that it's attached basically to the building and then leave the rest of the sidewalk from the enclosure out to the, to the curb open for unhindered pedestrian movement. And then the final comment was just if it would be good if the applicants could maybe get the applications in a little sooner uh, in anticipation of the season coming up. Because uh, now that the warm weather's broken, uh, we wanted to make sure and get this on the agenda today. I know it's been uh, an idea concept that the council's been supportive of and, and we want to promote downtown. And so we didn't want to delay it any more than possible. But it'd be helpful to, to perhaps bring the application in a little bit earlier in the year next year. So uh, if there are any questions regarding what I went over, I'd be glad to answer them. Alderman Strait. Uh, thank you, Chairman Janser. Uh, Lance, I, I uh, had contact with Mr. Lackadoo earlier today, and his, his thinking was by extending the uh, seating away from the building, it allowed the ease of traffic on the non-stamped concrete uh, and so I guess my question is about ADA compliant. Is it, is it better to consider um, keeping the, maybe it's a question for Mr. Meyer about the non-stamped concrete available for say a, uh, a pedestrian um, is my first question. Uh, and he did mention that to me. I guess that's a consideration. Do you have anything on that Lance? Uh, Mr. President, Alderman Strait, just for clarification for everybody, the way that we design the downtown improvements is adjacent to all the building fronts, there's a four foot wide pedestrian corridor that's completely ADA compliant. Outside of that four feet, the sidewalk grade will vary a little bit to be able to tie into the curb and gutter. In some instances, the entire sidewalk corridor would be ADA compliant, but in some areas where there's a lot of topography we had to deal with. We couldn't make the entire corridor ADA compliant. So in this case, um, without going out there and, and double checking the math between that four feet and the, the curb, I can't tell you for sure if it'll be that uh, compliant okay. out in that area. But I do know from the building face, out four feet it is ADA compliant. All right. 
Thanks, Lance. And I, I guess Chairman Janser, if I continue, if I may, um, Lance, I, I guess uh, I appreciate your opinion about folks trying to get it in on time. Like the staff have worked hard to make this work. It's a new. Um, I think we also have to work with the business owners that are also having to go through a new process. I know um, I've asked repeatedly about where this is at over the last year, and I know we've had some staffing changes, and we've been trying to discuss fees. Um, and I guess my, my thinking is because we're moving into the season now, I, I would like to amend the original motion to include this as a two-year trial because we're moving into the summer now. Let's give ourselves this time in a full year um, to, to take a look at what it is, partly because a business is going to have to infer the cost of the seating, the fencing. We want it to look nice and clean. We talk about the importance of uniformity in downtown. Um, so that's just my thinking. And I, I guess I was curious, Lance, if you had a thought on that. Yes, sir. Well, certainly your prerogative. Um, I understand the investment you're talking about, and so that, that makes some sense, I think, to, to have to buy the furniture and, sure. and whatnot. Certainly the applicants could come in on a yearly basis and, and renew, but it would be up to you, I guess, as a council to decide what you feel is appropriate for the time period. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Alderman Strait, was that a motion, or was, were you just opining, uh, opining that you might like to do Well, it? I'll, I'll make a motion, but I wanted to allow my colleagues a chance to comment before we... I can move that motion. Okay. Uh, City Manager, do you have a comment? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Strait, I do appreciate your uh, suggestion. And uh, Mr. Lang and I did speak at length about this. Our, our concern is that we, we'd like it to be one year, although you can do two or three for that matter, but one year makes sense for us because we're not really sure when it comes to snow removal what the period would be to end. Uh, what needs to happen in relation to permit modifications if the first year doesn't go well or there's pedestrian impediments or, or infraction or problems or those sorts of things. It would allow us simply another <coughs> opportunity to revisit the rules, not necessarily the program, because we imagine the program will continue. We have no intention of not allowing um, businesses to continue and then again reap the benefits of the investments they made either in the gating or in the seating or whatnot, but just to allow us to have maybe a little bit more um, better, I should say, controls over how the, the pedestrian spaces and right-of-way space would be utilized based upon a first year's trial. So again, as Mr. Lang says, it is your prerogative, but that was at least the thinking behind it. Sure. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor. I have a couple of comments on this. Uh, first of all, I, I agree with Alderman Strait that uh, one year halfway through the summer isn't really a good test, and I think these people are investing a considerable amount of money to uh, really improve downtown and create an atmosphere of uh, that's inviting. I think we, we owe them uh, at least one full season to do this. A couple of other comments uh, that uh, uh, Lance has brought up. Um, the, the flat fee, I mean, I think we've got a, an application fee of $35. I think it should be one in the same. Uh, with uh, the privilege of occupying the city right of way, um, it, it's you know their right of way too, um, and uh, the, the flat fee, the percentage of sales is, is completely out of the question in my mind. That's very intrusive. Are you going to only have a percentage of fees for the portion of the, the the sidewalk sales? I mean, do you expect people actually to keep track of that? I mean, it, it's completely uh, uh, unmanageable. The other thing is that with regards to the seating being away from the building, I see absolutely no problem with that. If you go to Bismarck, that's exactly what they do in Bismarck. They do it very well. The, the citizens there are, are very adept at uh, walking around uh, the seating, and the, the servers do an excellent job of going back and forth. It creates a great atmosphere, and I think that's exactly what we were trying to do when we approved this concept for our downtown was to improve the atmosphere, make it more inviting, bring young people back downtown. And we have seem to have spent an awful lot of time trying to complicate it, um, which I understand we have to have rules and regulations, and I'm not being critical about that. But um, I, I think that the items that I've just mentioned need to be adjusted. Uh, either we have a $35 application fee or if we have a $200 application fee that covers the, uh, the season, that's fine. 
let's do that, but let's do one or the other, and let's uh, let's let people have sidewalk dining like they do in the rest of the world, and um, uh, prima. And I agree with Alderman Strait with giving these business people the opportunity of recouping some of their investment before we pull the rug out from underneath them. Okay. Well, thank you for your thoughts, Mr. Mayor. We're just trying to, this is a first time for staff too, so some of these are ideas and maybe they aren't good ones or that we don't want to implement, so I appreciate your comments. Okay, Alderman Potagula. I think it's good to have a shakedown or dry run period. Um, my main concern in addition to what's already been mentioned is uh, ADA accessibility. I don't remember the particular um, topography and the, the, the nature of the sidewalk in front of this particular establishment. But to me, that's a real concern if people in wheelchairs, motorized or non-motorized, have to find their way between tables and things like that. So I guess I'd like to make any approval contingent upon us maintaining ADA accessibility. I think that's really important. Further discussion? Alderman Wolski. President Janser, uh, I'll share thoughts as well on, on these larger issues. Um, I, I'm uh, comfortable with sort of a shorter term in the sense that, uh, that we do want to have the evaluation period. I, I think what I would be comfortable with is, is using the summer of 2018 and through the summer of 2019 as well, and then, and then we review in the fall and, and, and make an adjustment. So we do have two full seasons for anybody who choose to participate uh, at this point. Um, and, and I think I would agree with the mayor's comments regarding the, the, the fee structure as well. Um, that was uh, the, the percentage of, of profits and, and things like that, that really just it, it got my attention in, uh, and, and I'm uncomfortable with that idea. So um, with that, and then regarding the, this tap room application, uh, I do think it's reasonable to, to have a crossing path across the, the, the sidewalk right of way out to the encroachment area. Um, I, I, and in particular in that location, as, as I see it, that's what makes the most sense. Uh, otherwise, the, the path of pedestrian traffic is gonna be sort of greatly disrupted by, uh, by this area. And so as we get it out closer to the curb for the folks walking down the street, they don't have to change. But, but the folks outside the establishment can still get to enjoy the outdoors. So. Okay. Uh, Alderman Strait. Uh, thank you, Chairman Janser. I guess uh, I met with Mr. Burlegame a few weeks ago from Independence Inc. And uh, I know having been downtown recently that there are a number of individuals with wheelchairs that I've seen in establishments. And maybe, Lance, that's something you can uh, include in future applications as we try this out to, to just remind people of the importance of the entrance to a to a, a seating area for folks um, with various abilities and disabilities to so so we're inclusive, and I guess if if this body decided to um, consider staff recommendation and go with one year, um, maybe these initial folks that have uh, applied um, could have the fee waived for the second year. I guess was my my thought, Chairman Janser. So with that, I'm I'm done. Okay. Alderman Sitma. Well, first, second, third, and fourth, all of the comments without reiterating, but uh, if, if we're looking for some direction on this, um, we've got a motion on the floor to approve what's before us, but I would then uh, make a motion to amend removing um, the percentage of sales, uh, as Mr. Mayor had uh, suggested here, and also uh, part number six as far as the timeline. I get it that, yeah, we want them in a timely manner, but that's up that's up to the applicants. And I, I think that North Dakota's very short summer is going to spur that in and of itself. If, if they want it in a timely manner, they'll get it in, in a timely manner. Is that an amendment? That is an amendment to the motion. I'll second the amendment. Okay. Um, discussion on the amendment. Uh, can the clerk clarify the timeline then? I don't think you identified a timeline. Yeah. That was going to be my question. Alderman Sitma, maybe. Yeah, you Alderman Sitma, would yeah. you like to include I, in your I motion I would like to timeline. include the timeline of that two-year yeah. okay. trial Perfect. period okay. within that, that, that amendment to the motion. And the second is in agreement with that? Yes. Okay. So, um, so we're looking at a two-year um, 
term with a um, application fee of $35 and um, remaining um, ADA compliant. Um, any further discussion? Alderman Wolski. Uh, some, well, this, I'll, I'll hold this is more on the original motion. Okay. Mr. President, uh, I have a question on the time period. Uh, because of the winter, uh, the, the time is only going to be during the summer months, really, that this is going to be valid, a seasonal permit. Right. So when we say two years, do, do we want to say made October or something within those years or, or not? Or? Well, you know, I think the weather sort of dictates. I mean, I think we all sort of have a common sense understanding that, you know, um, <laughs> when it gets cold, uh, people aren't going to want to be sitting outside enjoying a beverage. So, uh, you know, I don't know that we have to pick a time. It, it'll vary from year to year, frankly. There's some great days in October sometimes, mm -hmm. other times not so much. So I think we let the establishment owners figure that out. Very good. And that's, that's just my opinion, but I, I don't Agreed. Okay, so the, so the time span that we're talking about would be uh, to, uh, so let's say, the fall of 19 is what we're talking about. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, we'll vote on the amendment. Call the roll. Sitmer? Yes. Street? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Hodgegul? Yes. Motion carried. So now we're back to discussion of the original motion um, as amended for uh, the uh, tap room. Any further discussion? Alderman Wolski. President Janser, thank you. Uh, my The comments that I was going to bring up a moment ago were very much addressed in terms of the seasonal uh, concerns and, and those. Um, I, I think on Monday night I'll, I'll be looking at kind of staff's recommendations in terms of the way they decipher all of this. Uh, it, you know, I don't know if it's appropriate for them to, to bring back sort of a revised plan to look at, look at this as clearly as we po possible before approving it. But. City Manager. Uh, thank you, President Janser. I would recommend that we follow Alderman Wolski's recommendation in regard to bringing back a comprehensive, uh, at least staff's interpretation of what's gone on today so that we're all clear on, on what that is. Mm -hmm. I might also remind the council as you move to debate this at the council meeting that you consider snow removal operations. If we do have a intensive snowstorm for, for some reason and the snow plow has to get through, we don't want to be held responsible for damage of equipment on the sidewalks. This is one other reason to push the, the some of the, the seating area maybe back a little bit, also to allow people to get up on the sidewalk from the curb, from their vehicles. There's just those types of considerations that uh, you know we just want to be aware of and have some flexibility to work within and around. So uh, you might want to think about that also. But we'll bring back the recommendations as we understand it uh, to the city council meeting. Okay, fair enough. Mr. Mayor. Um, to that point, maybe instead of uh, uh, we, we could have it in the the um, the encroachment agreement that uh, they are, that the city is not responsible for any damages uh, through uh, operation of cleaning the streets, sweeping the streets, whatever it might be. That it's all up to them. That way, we don't have to worry about the weather. And if we if they elect to have a, uh, hot chocolate night uh, in the middle of winter, they wanted to do that. I would, I'm not going, but great. Uh, but uh, I think if we put the onus back on them, which we often do, I think that would cover that. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think that um, if, you know, if a big snowstorm is moving in and their stuff is still out by the curb, um, I think it's up to them to get it moved, get it, get it out of there. So I think the clause that the mayor is suggesting makes a lot of sense. Uh, President Janser, uh, Mayor Barney, in the draft of the agreement I put together, there is some liability language in there uh, that the city is not to be held liable. It also says the city has the right to come in and either for routine maintenance or for emergencies to, if they need to get in there, they can get in there, and, and there's no pre-notice to the owners required. Yeah, yeah. I and think the, the legal city department will review that. Take yeah, I think the city can be held harmless in that kind of circumstance. So, okay. 
Any further discussion? Alderman Walski? President Janser, thank you. I appreciate this discussion. I'm gonna support the motion uh, as amended. My, my larger concern in all of this was that, that we get this approval moving forward for, for the proprietors of this business and, and on the next agenda item. Um, so I, that's, that's, I would say, my biggest concern in all of this is that we get a, a yes to these folks so they can start helping us figure out what we need to learn. Okay, well, if we're done talking, then we can vote on it. <laughs> Are we ready to vote? Okay, call the roll. Olson? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Street? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Motion carried. Um, we are now to uh, item 11, which is a very similar uh, request to the previous one. So moved. Uh, moved by Wolski. Second. Second by Sitma. Um, Discussion. President Janser, I might uh, just ask Mr. Lang if there are any considerable differences in this application that need, that need to be addressed, or have we kind of covered the, the gamut on, on the previous agenda item? There is one, one uh, concern, I guess, that in this particular one, the applicant's only requesting to come out 42 inches from the building, which by the ordinance could be approved by the planning director but uh, she wanted to ask for a multi-year. She wanted to get a three-year approval, and it sounds like the council's moving towards a two-year approval, and uh, the planning director can only do a year at a time. So that's why uh, the 10 North Main is on the agenda, not because it's bigger than 42 inches, but because they, the, the applicant requested more than one year, and I thought that should go to council since the council's authorized to do a multi-year um, permitting. Okay, well, it, um, it, it, Alderman Walton, I'm assuming your motion is the, for the two-year term, the same, I guess, uh, sort of the same thing that we did for item 10, is that correct? Or? Um, m my motion, I, th I think, would, would put this ab application under the same terms as the previous discussion. Okay, okay. I, I, thanks for that clarification. And um, thank you, Mr. Lang. And uh, is there any further discussion or clarification needed on this item? Do we, uh, the second does agree? Second does agree. Second does agree, okay, thank you, Mr. Sitma. Um, any further discussion or questions on the item? Mr. Lang, do you have something further or are you okay? I'm fine, unless okay. you have questions for me. Okay, all right. Very good, then we're ready to vote. Please call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Okay, um, motion carried. Uh, we're on item 12, which is uh, informational. It is the um, Board of Health Approved Responsible Beverage Server Training. And I see our presenter is uh, coming to the podium, so um, good afternoon. Good to see you again. Hello. Please proceed. My name is Kira Lampton, and I'm a Prevention Outreach Coordinator with First District Health Unit. Um, I'm just here simply to inform City Council that uh, at the May meeting, the Board of Health has approved um, or adopted the Responsible Beverage Server Training into our food code. Um, we know that alcohol continues to be one of the number one causes of accident and injuries and also people's drug of choice. Um, we have worked with the Mayor's Council on Addiction and also community partner agencies on finding strategies to help reduce substance use addictions um, and also to combat underage drinking as well. Um, responsible beverage server training is an evidence-based uh, strategy that has helped, uh, been proven to help reduce underage drinking and also adult binge drinking. Um, currently, the new food code is being <coughs> revised, um, and we would be happy to come back and provide further details uh, when it's been approved by Board of Health. Um, but I'm here today to see if there's any questions or uh, any for additional information I can provide. I, I do have a question. How many servers, roughly, do you do you train uh, in a year or? Um, we, sorry, it's cycling. Um, we, I believe we started this back in 2014 and um, First District Health Unit covers uh, seven counties. And since that time we have uh, trained uh, around 600 servers. Oh, okay. Alderman Wolski. 
President Janser, thank you, uh, Ms. Lampton. I, um, when you say adopted into code, yes. is it your expect expectation that, that this will become a manda mandatory requirement? Is that what we're talking about here? That is correct. Uh, with Board of Health, it will cover our seven county area. And since Ward County is within that um, area, <coughs> that's why we are here. Okay, continue. I, yeah, I, so, so as this moves forward, um, my concern that you guys uh, would be very proactive in communicating with all the, the, the bar owners and restaurant owners that are going to be impacted by this, because obviously there's going to be some time and expense uh, that goes into uh, bringing all their servers up to date. I think this is a good, important service. I, I actually just had a, 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 a bar worker comment to me that this is something we should be doing in the community, and he, and he wasn't aware that this was already available. So. Um, so I, I appreciate the service. I, I just want to be really aggressive in letting folks know that this is coming up for them. Oh, of course. We will be, um, once it's adopted and approved by, by Board of Health, we will be uh, working with, uh, we currently actually work with um, bar owners and establishments to uh, educate their, their trainers or their, their servers. Um, we, we currently offer classes once a month already through First District, um, and there's also an online training as well available through the National uh, Safety Council. Alderman Sitma. Thank you. Is there a cost to the bar owners, the restaurant owners, the, the folks that are going through the training for this? Uh, at this time, for the training itself, uh, First District does not have a cost. The online version through the National Safety Council does have a charge. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Strait. Uh, thank you, Chairman Janser. I, Kira, I just wanted you to know that I shared the photos of the downtown smoking issue with the entire council. Uh, I'll share them with Chief Olson as well. and. Uh, um, I'll, I'll speak with some of the downtown merchants as well, but I appreciated you uh, sharing that information with me and maybe part of that server training, we can uh, share that important information again with uh, all those owners. Okay, thank thank you. you. Alderman Potter, you. I wanted to thank you for your efforts and uh, put my stamp of approval on it as a health psychologist. Um, these kinds of interventions, I think generally are very effective no matter what the behavior we're talking about. And I think it's a lot easier to train people rather than necessarily take a law enforcement uh, perspective, although it may be necessary at times. Um, just for the benefit of the, the public and the council, when we're talking about establishing an age limit, um, usually we have significant use of substances for about a year to a year and a half younger than that limit. So if we're talking about not serving people alcohol at the age of 21, we're really making a significant impact serving or selling. We're making a significant impact until around 19 and a half. Um, I have mixed feelings about 21 being the age, but when you think that year and a half span into consideration, I, I guess I really don't want too many people drinking too much at, at that age. So um, th this is something, and the reason I make this comment is something I do have some actual technical uh, and professional experience with and knowledge of the literature. And this is, a, I think, a very, very good approach. So I wanted to second that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any further comments or questions for uh, Kira? Okay, well seeing none, thank you very much thank for very uh, much. appearing and uh, presenting that to us. We appreciate your work. Um, that brings us to item 13 which is a update on the parking structures, um, Mr. Wakefield. President Chancellor and members of the committee, uh, just a, a brief update of where we're at. Um, we've been uh, working with this parking ramp project for um, six plus weeks now, so we're anxiously awaiting uh, getting that back into full operations. Uh, tentatively, we anticipate that uh, we'll be open for business on Monday. Uh, we still have a few things to get lined up yet. The, we've had some difficulty with the merchant account and the, the uh, parking equipment manufacturer getting on the same page to get everything lined up and working and getting them back to town. But right now, uh, we anticipate that we'll close the inbound gates um, most likely tomorrow and leave the outbound gates open over the weekend and the idea being that we don't want to trap cars in the parking ramp with no ticket to be able to get out so for the next few days those vehicles will get tickets like they would in normal operation but they would still be able to get out of the ramp uh, without any difficulty so hopefully that would uh, flush through and uh, then Monday would resume operations. 
Uh, Mr. Sickler and his crew have been working to get things up and running and cleaned up and um, you know, identify needs uh, of the ramp. And we're also working on developing our budgets uh, for the parking ramps for the upcoming year, along with the remainder of the budgets for the city. So I just wanted to bring that update. Uh, hopefully we'll be on target for Monday and um, you know, fingers crossed things will work smoothly. Do you have any questions? Um, David, so, uh, so then starting Monday is, I think previously at some point at least, the first portion of parking time was free. Is that, what, what is the plan for how it's going to be starting Monday? Uh, President Janser, uh, at this point, um, we have left um, all of the rates and charges exactly the same as they were previously. Okay, okay. thank you. Any, uh, Alderman Nolosky, do you have a question? I do, President Janser, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Lakefield, if you're able to answer this, great. It also may, may be more on the territory of Mr. Berry, I'm not sure, but, uh, and I know you guys have told us the, the schedule on this, but I'm just looking for the reminder or, or the update on uh, the expectation on the structural analysis yeah. and, and where we're at overall on, on the general condition of the buildings. I, I can give you just a little bit of an update. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a firm that is in, engaged to do that structural analysis. And um, I know that there was, uh, they were looking for some additional information and I'm, I'm not aware of exactly how that turned out. We're still waiting, Lance. They're, they're, they're engaged in working on it. I guess we just don't have the results. In progress. Back. Yes. Okay. okay um, <clears throat> City Attorney. Mr. President, and Alderman Walski, that's being done through our outside counsel. They have worked with a firm that's out of state and they're working on um, lining that relationship up. Lance has provided a scope and they've provided um, a response to that and Lance has reviewed that. So we're in progress of doing that right now. You had something further, Alderman Walski? Yeah, uh, one, just one follow up. I, the, the expectation on when we're going to be seeing that and looking at it, I, I guess that's my, my final curiosity. President Janser. I might be able to address that. Thank you. I might be able to address that. So because we're working with an outside agency on this, namely the attorneys working on the project for us, um, they're supposed to be scheduling that here fairly soon. We imagine that the work itself will take probably just a few days, but getting it, getting it scheduled and getting the outside firm, which is outside of, my, of uh, Minot, it's actually in uh, Minneapolis, to come up and get on the schedule to come and review the, the project, then go back and write it up and those sorts of things. We're probably a, a good month out from uh, initiation. So I'd say if you would give us, you know, four to six weeks, we'd probably have that completed for you and ready for the for the city council's uh, consideration and update. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any further, Alderman Padrigula? I guess a question, a couple of comments. First of all, I wanted to clarify. Um, the issue of the charging. Originally, I think uh, f parking was free for an hour, and now it's free for two hours. Are we intending? Or it was free completely. <laughs> when manager. is it free and not free? Okay, city manager. Thank you, uh, President Janser. Uh, Alderman Padrigo, I'm sorry for the confusion. It is still first hour free. We did recommend uh, that at some point we have a conversation about whether or not to offer first two hours of free parking. And uh, that, would, that conversation has not occurred with the council and you have not given us your blessing to do that. It's not a conversation we necessarily formally started with you. It was just one of those things that we said, eventually we we'll wanna talk about that and see if it made sense and you could agree that, you know, making on-street parking, you know, the first two hours, you know, equivalent to the first two hours free in the, um, in the parking garages. So we, we don't have that <coughs> in place. The signage and the rates uh, denoting uh, that are being denoted on the signage only allow for first hour free, which is what it was when we took it over. Okay. Okay. Um, the comment um, is that um, we were furnished, uh, I think last month, um, a very detailed six or seven page report on how the city planned to proceed to deal with this situation. And I wanted to publicly uh, com compliment city staff. Uh, it, it was a team effort, uh, not just one individual. I think my, my email originally came to you or maybe to Lance. 
uh, I forget who now, um, I felt they were the point person for the, for the ramps. But um, that document and the plan expressed in it, which we're seeing kind of unfold today, um, is probably the most detailed and the most responsive uh, plan I've ever seen uh, come from city staff. Uh, and I wanted to um, publicly compliment and commend you. It addressed almost all of the issues that I've had and that I've received from citizens uh, about the situation. Um, it really was exemplary, and, and I wanted to, uh, to compliment those who were responsible for it. Um, I hope I'll have the opportunity to engage in the conversations that Mr. Berry is planning on having with us about things like rates and stuff like that. Um, I also have some comments regarding security that I've been picking up from various people. But again, that's that's down the road. But but the issues that you've you've raised and, and outlined uh, and how we plan to address them in the plan is just is just excellent for starters. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anything as good before. Alderman Olson. Do we have any information related to the number of cars that are parking in there on average, and did it change when it was free? President Janser, Alderman Olson, um, unfortunately with the gates being blocked open, we don't get <laughs> car counts then also, and uh, as well when we initially took it over, we didn't have the communication between the computer and uh, the gate modules, so we haven't been able to track that data. Um, you know, when we have been in there, there there's cars parking in there. Um, I know that there has been some calls and, and requests regarding, you know, the passes. Uh, we've had some people inquire about student parking in there. So there are a number of things that we may bring forward in the future, uh, ways to utilize those a little bit more going forward. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Lakefield. Appreciate it. Okay, um, that completes item 13. Um, we are on to item 14, which is the Spotlight RFP authorization for appraisers. So motion. Second. Uh, who's, who made the motion? Alderman Wolski, okay. And Alderman Sitma second. Um, discussion. Alderman Wolski. Brief comment here, President Janser. Uh, Mr. Zakian, I just wanted to uh, say thank you for, for bringing this, uh, this item forward in this way. I, I think it's uh, healthy every once in a while to, to do a little compare and contrast against uh, a service like this through the appraisals. And, and this little opportunity with this Spotlight program allows us to, to, to just kind of give ourselves a check on, on how that process is working. We've been doing a lot of appraisals and we've got a lot more to do, so I think this is healthy. Okay, I guess I had, I had one question on this. Um, in in uh, assuming that the RFP is successful, are we going to have um, in the, uh, in, in whatever agreement we end up with, are we going to have um, sufficient um, motivation for these folks to get the work done timely. Uh, one, of the, one of the concerns that I have is that it seems like a lot of time, a lot of times appraisals can drag on uh, and not get completed when other portions of an acquisition are, you know, sitting there queued and ready to go. So do we, can you comment on that or has that been considered at all? Um, President Janser, it's a good question. Um, I think I've shared with many of you my frustration with the current process because I know you get constituents inquiring, how come I haven't heard about an offer or an offer has been made? And it has become, because the process has been slow. Um, picking up on what Alderman Walski um, mentioned, and I appreciate that, this is a small opportunity for us to see if we can become more competitive and smarter from lessons learned. Uh, specific to your question, there will be a time delivery requirement in the RFP so that anybody bidding on this will be expected to live under that time frame. Okay, that's good. Any other questions for Mr. Zakian? Okay, seeing none, thank you, John. Um, any further discussion by the committee? 
Alderman Street. Uh, thank you, Chairman Janser. I'm going to uh, direct some comments to our city manager offline about my uh, um, frustration a little bit with uh, how we handle process uh, moving forward into the after post election and um, just some ideas that I'm stewing on about um, staff's ability to turn around and get us this information, which is important to um, frustrations I've had a little bit of trying to convey um, the public's comments and try to work with Kelly to get items on the agenda moving forward. So just a little subtle tweak that I'm going to share for next month. So. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Hondragula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Very good. Um, that brings us to the end of our agenda for today. And with that, we're adjourned.